She learns what it feels like to see color. You may not realize it, but color is subconsciously affecting you, like all the time. Filmmakers know this and employ it in their arsenal to subtly manipulate your emotions to the way they want. Utilizing color is a powerful little trick. Think about how the color red or blue makes you feel. What memories does it invoke? Those connections buried way down deep inside us easily bubble up to the surface if triggered in just the right way. Universally, people have similar reactions and feelings to certain colors. And films, especially science fiction films, are known to use that to their advantage. Today we're going to dive in and take a look at one of my favorite directors and storytellers, Alex Garland, and how he uses color. He's able to create a tailored experience and manipulate our feelings in his films Ex Machina and Annihilation. Also, both have Oscar Isaac in them, so we all win. Oscar Isaac for everything, please. He's, you know, a very good actor and handsome as well. Anyway, before we do that, hold up, let's take it back for just a hot second. Since the dawn of film, filmmakers have experimented with ways color can affect audiences. Some of the earliest color films were actually hand-tinted frame by frame, like George Millier's A Trip to the Moon and Fritz Lang's Metropolis, both of which contested to be the first sci-fi genre movies. But color was first studied in conjunction with psychology back in the early 1800s by poet and polymath Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Johann wrote a book called Theory of Colors that looked into intuition-based speculation on the influence of color perception on emotional experience. He put different colors into categories called plus colors and minus colors based on whether each hue would inhibit positive or negative feelings. While some directors are overt with how they play and disorient with color, other creators are a bit more subtle. Alex Garland likes to approach his use of color from a more naturalistic way of thinking, serving the narrative and allowing audience members to become enveloped in the plot rather than cognizant of the various hues. We'll start with a look at his debut film, Ex Machina. Ex Machina tells the story of a man meeting an artificial sentient life form and testing its level of humanity. It makes sense that Garland would choose primary colors as his main triadic palette for the film, in this case, yellow, blue, and red, since these are the colors that we recognize most from nature. He also chooses black and white deliberately as we think and separate understanding what is natural and what is unnatural or man-made. Our eyes pick up on this, informing how we think about the plot as it moves forward. Throughout the narrative, yellow represents unease, confusion, and imminent danger approaching. We can see this in scenes like this one, where Caleb admits to Nathan that he carried out his plan to set Ava free. After revealing that he changed the programming of the research facility's emergency lockdown system to open all the doors when triggered, rather than to lock all doors, the room is immediately bathed in red as the lockdown system is activated. Although this is part of the plot, it also serves to show us that something bad is about to happen, something that we're not initially aware of. Garland also uses these colors as a signifier for all his characters. Let's take a look at our three main players, Caleb, Nathan, and Ava. The film's opening sequence features the protagonist, Caleb Smith, winning a contest at his place of employment, Blue Book, to go meet the CEO of the company, Nathan Bateman, on a private retreat. This scene alone is bathed in blue, representing balance, calm, a state of normalcy. This makes sense because we're introduced to Caleb's everyday life working at Blue Book. Blue becomes Caleb's chosen color throughout the film because he remains grounded and serves as our viewer perspective into the story. As he learns new information, we do too. Caleb's chosen color of blue, which is reflected in his clothes and the surroundings in which he appears most comfortable, is contrasted physically through the antagonist of the film, Nathan. It's no coincidence that Nathan was dressed in mostly blacks and grays and is often placed in dark areas of the frame. He blends into the walls of his house. He's part of the institutionality of it. He is the trap of the system. This building isn't a house. It's a research facility. Nathan is shrouded with secrecy at the beginning of the film, as he even makes Caleb sign a very serious NDA before he goes to meet Ava, Nathan's sentient robot. Nathan changes his key colors in only a few scenes, the first in the all-white lab where Nathan breaks down the building of the AI brain to Caleb. It's later that we see it's this philosophy on AIs that leads to his death as he underestimates them greatly, feeling 
most godlike to them, a fully pure being which the color white supports. Speaking of his death, the other time we see him in white is on the last day of his life, which takes place in the all-white hallway with the glaring exception of the red carpet. The red in this scene represents danger. It's supposed to make us feel claustrophobic and scared. The character that utilizes color the most, though, is Ava. Her transformation is apparent through her actions and feelings and gets visually represented in her choice of clothes. She chooses to dress in a calm blue at first, then she wears a red-orange sweater, indicating that she is more dangerous than she initially outwardly appears. After locking Caleb in the institution before escaping, she puts on a white dress, symbolizing her freedom and mimicking her former master Nathan's sense of ascension and purity when he donned the color. As you can see, each character's personal journey is identified by the colors Garland carefully selected for them. Whether it's Nathan's God Complex, showcased by the use of white, or defining Ava's manipulations in calming blues to alarming reds as the narrative progresses. Moving on to Garland's follow-up film, Annihilation, Garland keeps the flow going with this sort of basic color palette and similar color psychology. However, Annihilation takes us to a new world as viewers, one so different from our own that Alex chose to expand his color palette a bit to accommodate for our imaginations. Annihilation tells the story of a young biologist, Lena, who lost her husband when he went missing on a military mission to a mysterious place called the Shimmer. When he returns to her after a year of being missing with no memories and no answers to her myriad of questions, this causes Lena to feel conflicted about his arrival. This introduces the concepts of instability, depression, and self-destruction, which are translated into the scope of colors Garland chose to incorporate into the cinematography and the mise-en-scene of the film. She decides to go to the strange oddity that is the Shimmer to investigate. Everything within the realm of the Shimmer is scrambled because of DNA reordering, so we physically see those fractals with the color palette chosen, including pinks, teals, and purples, things that are starkly unnatural, but are still integrated into the theme of understanding what makes us human and essentially alive. The components of our humanity is something Garland seems to want to explore in both of his films, since it's such a focal point of both Ex Machina and Annihilation. We're going to do something a little different for this one. Lena is our main focus for our exploration, so we're going to instead hone in on some of the key color choices Garland employs throughout and how they reflect her personal exploration. The all-encompassing world of The Shimmer feels almost like a dreamland in comparison with reality. But those pastel teals, purples, and especially pink colors are actually supposed to make us feel uneasy despite being beautiful and fitting nicely into the palette Garland sets up for us initially. Because they're so unnatural, we gain this innate feeling that there's danger everywhere in this world. There's so much we don't understand and so much that's unstable and potentially subject to change at any moment. Pink, being one of the colors that represents instability, can be seen in flowers that mark the beginning of every dangerous scene. These specific pink flowers indicate coming danger, just like yellow does in Ex Machina. Lena represents the counter to this instability because, like Caleb in Ex Machina, her principal color is blue. We see the color following her often, from the flashbacks with her husband, to her lover in his absence, to her trying to figure out what's happening to their bodies in the shimmer. Blue is Lena's constant, her old life and sense of self and in part, her confusion of who she actually is. Lena occasionally dons the color gray like the rest of the expedition frequently does. Gray is reflective of instability as well, in addition to self-destruction. Each member of the cohort is seeking relief from their struggles and none survive other than Lena, who has hope and willingness to adapt. Leading us into our last important color in Annihilation, white. Lena is being interviewed in white while telling the story of what happened to the rest of her companions, representing her rebirth through her new perspective on the Shimmer. It wasn't destroying. It was changing everything. It was making something new. White represents this clarity as she presents the situation. We are made aware that she has changed her perspective to be one of less emotional confusion and of more intellectual understanding. There's also a repetition of the combination of white and blue. 
It's everywhere in the film, from the subtle coloring of Lena's shirt, to the change of paint in the walls, to the poignant end destination of the lighthouse and the entryway to the center. Garland had these colors play against each other to symbolize a sense of rebirth and Lena's exploration throughout the film. He gives you the colors in doses, slowly but repeatedly having your mind make those little connections. While blue is Lena's identifier, she transitions from the blue coloring from her past to white by the end of her journey. She's the only one to fully embrace those themes Garland is trying to enforce. Destruction, reconstruction of the self, and breaking yourself down and rebuilding to a new version of who you are. Taking the doubt and instability and to challenge it to find something new on the other side. There's so much more that can be dissected just from the color in these movies, let alone the other elements in Alex Garland's stories. In both Ex Machina and Annihilation, Garland uses the visuals of blues, whites, yellows, and reds to help us connect the dots to the stories he's trying to tell us with his characters. In Ex Machina, he challenges the essence of what makes up our humanity and the very concept of artificial life, which is reinforced by all three characters' distinct color palettes. Then, in Annihilation, Garland brings up perceptions of instability, self-destruction, and what makes us anomalies in this universe. He distinguishes this through the specific repetition of blue and white throughout. So the next time you're watching your favorite sci-fi film, or even the next time you look in the mirror at what you're wearing, think about how much color is subconsciously shaping the world around you and who you are.